Hello YouTube, this is your girl Megan from the Hood Astro Queen. Welcome back to my channel, Cousins. However, if this is your first time joining me on today, welcome, welcome. It's here that we use information from celestial bodies to help us gain a better understanding of our favorite celebrities, world events, but most importantly, our damn selves. So go ahead, subscribe to become part of the family. Okay, thumbs up this video to grow the channel and hit that notification bell so that way you will be alerted whenever I make a new post. Also, if you are interested in booking your very own astrology reading, contact me at astroworld at gmail.com and we can get you squared away on today. Astro W-E-R-L-D, that is. So with that being said, I am coming to you guys once more with yet another celebrity natal chart reading. This time it's going to be real quick, real quick and easy in and out, okay? Because this is actually a revisited. It's part of the revisited series. I did a reading on Ms. Resume, Resume, call your daddy Carter. But in lieu of all of the recent events that have unfolded, I definitely wanted to go back and point out a few things. So as I'm sure you all may know, Resume, Regine, call your daddy Carter, has been in the news because her longtime on again, off again boyfriend, Mr. Lucci, Mr. Uh -huh -huh, has actually been arrested for murder. Okay, the man is arrested for murder after being involved allegedly in a drive by shooting in Atlanta, which resulted in one man being shot in the head. So there's a lot of chaos going on. And so he. Surrendered himself to the authorities and resume, Regine, call your daddy Cotta, made it her business to make herself the spokesman of said boyfriend. But she had already been catching a lot of flack beforehand because even prior to his arrest, she had been doing a lot of press. Basically explaining why she had made the decision to get back together with him. They have been very public in their relationship in the past. It has also been made very public that Mr. Y.N. Lucci, Mr. Uh -huh -huh, has not been able to be faithful, okay? He does really embarrassing things, like not really claiming her in public, attending cucumber challenge contests where women are deep-throating cucumbers and shoving them up each other's orifices. It's just a lot. And Resume, Regine, call your daddy Carter, would make it a point to, you know, go on these long rants about how, you know, women should respect themselves. And I think at one point she had sworn off her relationship with him and was basically saying she would never date another rapper. Never, ever, ever. And lo and behold, you know, the shade room catches everything. People started noticing them appearing on vacations together. And now recently she has just came out and said, look, I don't like starting over. Okay, I don't I don't want to be without him. I don't like starting over. I know when he's lying. I know when he's not and blah, 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 blah. It's my life. I do what makes me happy. Blah, 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 blah. So a lot of people are just saying, girl, you sound dumb. Then in tandem with, you know, a lot of her more judgmental comments that she'll have towards a lot of other women. She's always just saying something that it's just making her look crazy. She's not a very well liked person in terms of like um, the public. She's never really had a super likable personality. But I want to talk about why Resume Regine Call Your Daddy Carter is just particularly screwed when it comes to the men department. And it's not only manifesting in her relationship with Lucci, but I will go ahead and say that for her entire life, she's going to go through the ringer when it comes to her relationships with men. And of course, this is nothing that I'm wishing or hoping for her, but the stars don't lie. So let's just go ahead and unpack her natal chart and it'll tell you everything that you need to know. So Miss Resume Regine, call your daddy Carter, was born November 29th, 1998, okay, in New Orleans, Louisiana, placing her son at the sixth degree of Sagittarius. And number six can make for a very relationship-oriented person. These are people who can even be hopeless romantics. And a lot of who they are, a lot of their identities, center and thrive off of partnership. It also doesn't help that with her being an Aries moon, she has her moon opposing her Mars at the first degree of Libra. And that number one could also deal with masculine energy. And already it sets up this dynamic to where a lot of her personality, a lot of who she is, is tied up in another person. You know, it 
can even create a person to where a lot of their own individuality is going to be warped. It's going to be stunted. These are women who can be very male focused, male centered, and already we're building up to something that can be very dangerous. All right. Where we can be just entering very dangerous and unhealthy territories. They also tend to find themselves in very one-sided relationships, relationships that lack a lot of reciprocation. If that's not bad enough, that number one energy could also make her extremely naive. She could have like a very childlike mind when it comes to dealing with men. Very childish when she's thinking about her relationships with men and what these relationships in her life should consist of. This aspect could also make her extremely insecure as there tends to be an innate tendency to compare oneself against other people uh, or compare oneself to other people. And these are women who typically tend to attract men who don't even really know where they want to be. Okay. Like playboys. All right. A woman with her Mars in Libra, depending on other factors in the chart, could definitely attract men who are always straddling the fence between them and another woman. It's almost always going to be like that, right? They can attract a lot of womanizers into their lives. And in the same vein of her being insecure, I thought it was very interesting because her son is conjunct her Pluto, which can deal with the person who gets plastic surgery. So I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, just considering that she has recently had plastic surgery, which is something else that she's received a lot of scrutiny for. Um, so yeah, the insecurity is there and she does try to assert herself and make herself seem like a person who is just very like, oh, I don't care what people think. I got haters. I love me. I love me. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But the minute I found out she was born on the 29th, that just went out the window because in and of itself, that number 29 could also produce issues with men. Like as a woman, you can have many issues with men because a lot of times there tends to be issues within the family dynamic, within the fa the home, dealing with the father. You know, these are people who could be very dysfunctional. They could have came from a very dysfunctional home environment, which made me instantly think to her mother, right? Her mother, uh, who was also in a very abusive relationship at several points and even had a very dysfunctional relationship with her own father. So, you know, people with that number 29 influence can come from a lot of dysfunction, but they can also be extremely insecure people. They have major self-esteem issues and they could have major uh, self-image problems, right? But they are the types to be very hard on the outside, very defensive on the outside, but deep down inside because of that number two energy, the number two is governed by cancer. They care. They care a lot. <laughs> they care a lot and they're very susceptible to, um, they're very impressionable to their environment. So they tend to mimic a lot of the dysfunction that was uh, given to them or shown to them in their home life. A lot of the things that they're surrounded by could definitely impact them. Also, it's not lost on me that the number two, because it's governed by the moon, deals with the breast and the stomach. And when you put that next to the number nine, which deals with cuts um, and incisions, okay, more so cuts, like superficial cuts, but nonetheless, her getting her breast and her stomach done, I think she got liposuction and a boob job. I thought that was very interesting as well because I mean it could point to where those areas on her body specifically were areas that she was insecure about I thought that was kind of cool kind of interesting but nonetheless as it pertains to the men right the men that she dates having that Aries moon opposing her Libra Mars could also even make her the type of person to really try to force things onto men that they don't really want you know what I mean so the type of woman to, who could really pressure a guy to be in a relationship who ain't really with that who ain't really on that he ain't really trying to hear that you know what I mean then it also doesn't help that that sun conjunct Pluto aspect especially in Sagittarius can attract a man who operates more so of like a rock star these are men who need to have uh i mean unlimited options they don't like to be inhibited these are men who can have an extremely difficult time settling down and a lot of that could even represent her father as well so i thought that was kind of interesting she also has her venus at the 14th degree of sagittarius also conjunct her pluto 
at the seventh degree, which could deal with, once again, her being in these relationships with men who don't want to settle down. It could also even deal with her being so head over heels, so idealistic and gung ho over new relationships that she jumps in head first without really examining the consequences or truly getting a full understanding of who this person really is. Okay. And that seven element, right, with her Pluto at the seventh degree also points towards this level of delusion. Um, it could even be self-delusion, especially with her son also conjunct Pluto, but also it could deal with where she just naturally attracts very deceptive men. So where, you know, these men could be very manipulative, where they could lead her on. Even when you think about her being a birth number 29, that also even deals with infidelity. OK, so these are people where it's, it's not uncommon for them to attract relationships where they're not going to be the only one. Even with that Venus and Sun conjunct Pluto, it's almost like you got to share your man. So, you know, this is just like a, a continuous thing that she's going to experience in life. It's, it, it could also create a situation where she's attracted to bad boys as well, which is also another really big part of the problem. She also has her Venus squaring her Jupiter at the 18th degree of Pisces. I don't even really like that number 18 because it can deal with where a person really needs to watch out when it comes to the people around them. They could be surrounded by people, some really nasty individuals. And with her Jupiter squaring her Venus, that right there is an aspect that could deal with her having a partner that goes to jail. <laughs> with her being a whole prison wife. Uh, it could also even just further reinforce this theme of her being gooped bamboozled hoodwinked i mean it could make her super gullible in relationships she even gives me the type of tea where she might even be the type to trick on him spend money on him give him what he want you know what i mean this it's not good it's not good it's not good at all but also look at this as her being bad with money as well but besides that right in relationships she could be the type of person to really, you know, have all of her hopes and her sights set on this individual and really have the purest of intentions. But this person either misrepresents themselves or they want too much leeway in the relationship. Like, you know, there is no clearly defined, you know, uh, boundaries set within the relationship. Now, her Mercury conjunct Venus, right, her uh, Mercury at the 12th degree of Sagittarius conjunct Venus could create a situation where she feels very connected to Lucci or very connected to these men that she deals with because it's like, okay, well, we're friends first. We have a very, you know, um, friendship kind of relationship where we laugh and we joke and we do this and we do that. And that's fine. I'll give that to her. But for the most part, you know, her chart really sets her up for a lot of toxicity and this the ultimate cap on this, the highlight of this could even be the fact that she is a Leo North Node. She has her North Node at the 26th degree. That number 26 breaks down to the number eight. And that number eight could deal with a person who has so much inadequacy. Like they have so many self inadequacy issues that they allow themselves to be drugged through the mud. It's like these people can be gluttons for punishment or they can kind of find themselves entrapped in that struggle mode right the struggle love i feel like love is pain and pain is love and love 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 this lifetime leo north nodes are indebted to experience romantic relationships it just so happens that with this setup she's just naturally going to experience struggle relationships relationships that are filled with karma relationships that could even last a long time so manifesting in her being with people way longer than she needs to be situations where she's just gonna be drugged through the mud also with her having her chiron at the 25th degree of scorpio squaring her north node you know these are going to be toxic relationships these are going to be relationships with men who once again can't commit She's going to be stuck in a cycle of 
toxicity when it comes to her relationships with men. She has very toxic and karmic relationships with men that could have absolutely started with the father as Leo also deals with the dad. A lot of Leo North and South Node women have daddy issues, whether she's willing to admit that or not or not. That's something that a lot of people on the outside looking in have been able to piece together, even astrology aside. So I just thought that this was very, very interesting. Her having Chiron squaring her nose could also signify her being um, such a hated person. <laughs> her receiving a lot of attention as a Leo North Nova, right? So her even being in the limelight, her even wanting to be an actress and all this other good stuff. But to where like people either, I mean, people just really don't like her. People really don't like her. And she also has a lot of uh, narcissistic qualities to her, especially with that uh, Leo North Node, which I mean, technically she is kind of entitled to in this lifetime. She just is. But, you know, that 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 Chiron squaring her North Node is just going to make it very difficult. It's going to be hard for her to run into a guy or come across a guy who's willing to act right. All of her relationships with men are going to be afflicted and just defective, period. You can even look at that square between her Chiron and North Node is her being a stepmother, her taking on other people's kids, which I feel like Lucci got about seven of them things, okay? Uh, but just even in the future, you guys have to keep that in mind. Even if she actually gains the strength and she wises up to a point where she terminates that relationship with Lucci for once and for all, she's going to find herself in the midst of another dude who probably got lots of kids. If he doesn't have lots of kids, he's still going to be an incredibly dysfunctional guy. You know, these men may even be abusive, um, manipulative. It's just always going to be relationship drama, just drama. As stated before, these relationships are filled with karma, which from an astrological standpoint means that, you know, there could be some past life experiences that she has with these individuals that just has to play out in this lifetime. They just got to play out. She's just the type of woman who's going to have to get her heart broken over and over again uh, in this lifetime. It just has to happen that way. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a dude like ended up having a baby on her or you know, whatever the case may be, brought her back a couple STDs, especially with that Venus conjunct Pluto. Then she got Chiron and Scorpio square in the North Node. My mind needs to be very careful. Um, but, you know, she's, it's, I mean, is it really her fault? Maybe it is. I don't know. I just know that according to the stars, she's fucked. So y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. How do y'all feel about resume, resume, call your daddy, Kata, and her current situation. And make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until the next video, I holla.